Welcome to episode 52 of the MMG Podcast. I'm Chris, and I'm joined once again by my good friend, Goat Cubs 7-Eleven. You know what's weird, Chris? Yes. Uh, different orange juice companies use different colors to signify the amount of pulp in their product. Uh, yes, that's correct. For example, uh, Tropicana orange juice uh, uses uses an orange label to I- indicate no pulp on their uh on their packaging however florida natural uses a green label to indicate no pulp on their packaging mm-hmm. you'd think there would be an inter- industry standard color such as the such as the colors for milk in which most of the time you will see a two percent milk always being a dark blue and a one percent usually being a light blue but the, no industry standard exists for orange juice and i demand action do you demand justice I demand juicy justice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know whether to be grossed out or like or, or like applaud your stand at this point. <laughs> like I, I mean, I, it's, I understand for sure where you're coming from here. Well, because if if I if I'm looking if like I if, if, let's say I'm like a, a Tropicana like that's my brand. I always go for Tropicana. Yes. Uh, but the the store doesn't have Tropicana, and I just think, okay, I'm gonna go for the label color I always get, and then I get fucking pulp in my orange juice. That's disgusting. <laughs> I, I am an anti pulp man. Yeah, well, yes. Uh, yeah, that has that was very clear. Uh, there was <laughs> there was a wasn't there like a Splatoon contest that was pulp. For there stuff? was. That was that was, was that was divisive in our, in our group. That was the that has been the most divisive Splatfest I think of all. <laughs> Even though like I I, I find I, I guess it's just because I don't know I think a lot of orange juice is just delicious. I, I'm like I'm very in between the whole thing, but yet yet it's the it is it was like the most diverse that I've ever seen. Uh, my group of friends. It was just like, I, how dare you want to have these. Why do you want to chew your drink? Chew your drink, and it, or and the other side of it, uh, the it is the why why not have the freshness of having the oranges and the oranges so you know orange it's real. orange juice like tastes it has like that enough of that orange flavor. It is literally juice from an orange. You don't need more of it. <laughs> I I want all you don't the, need the orange. Hard bit. <laughs> Uh, well, enjoy the juicy bits. Well, welcome to the juicy bits podcast. Uh, my name is Chris. Uh, well, <laughs> welcome to uh, the Pro Bowl uh, edition of our podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we, this is our second take, so I would I would make the joke of hey, we're gonna do an entire podcast of the Pro Bowl, but you know what? I don't feel like it. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, we're we're not. This is if you expected us to go really deep into the the Pro Bowl. Uh, you haven't heard us make jokes about the Pro Bowl all season. Yeah, I, yeah. I I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I, I mean, I don't know what major analysis we can give you. We what we will do though is near the end of the podcast, we'll we, we'll talk like a little bit about it, but we'll talk about the guys that aren't there in Orlando, uh, the ones that will not be, uh, unfortunately, will not be a part of it. Uh, and the ones that we think that should have been uh, a yeah. part of it. Um, so, uh, but in the meantime, the the true goal of this podcast, uh, instead of waiting till after the Super Bowl, uh, kind of doing like a little deep dive into each of the thirty teams that have been eliminated uh, from uh, playoff Super Bowl con- Super Bowl contention. Uh, yes. As you know, we have our two teams; they're locked in. Uh, so we're gonna talk about the thirty teams, their expectations, new coaching hires, you know, free agents. <laughs> Sorry, that was loud. Oh, uh, I I thought you were gonna make like a like a <laughs> like one of those like cough and like snide remark cough. No, that was that was just sneeze. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's that's what's really the whole overarching storyline of of this podcast is gonna be, but. First, uh, we do have two games to talk about, and they are the conference championship games, the ones that decided the two teams that are playing in the Super Bowl. And for Mr. Go Cubs, uh, you, you'll have to restart again uh, with your NFC championship yep. recap. So yeah. the uh, the New Orleans Saints <clears throat> versus the Los Angeles Rams in New Orleans. Uh, the New Orleans uh, New Orleans got out to a very early lead, thirteen to nothing, but the Rams proved that they weren't out of it yet. Uh, uh, getting their score uh, back up 
and it was became a very close game through uh throughout the rest of it as soon as the Rams uh got their shit together. Mm. Uh the uh uh there were a couple missed calls by the referees that I'll get into in a second that uh swayed events of the game in certain directions. Yes. Uh, which resulted in overtime, where the Saints got the ball first, could not do anything with it, and then the Rams got into good field field goal position, and Greg Zerline, uh, one of the greatest kickers of our generation, uh, was able to sink a 57-yarder for the Rams' victory. I would argue one of the great kicks of our uh, of playoff history right there. Also true. Uh, but... It was... It was... Dude, it was right down the middle. But, uh, yeah, fortunately, it was overshadowed. Yep. By uh, probably the biggest one, a one, and and don't get me wrong, and, and, or, like, we're going to talk about this a lot. This was <laughs> the, like, definition example of pass interference. Absolutely. Yes. That the refs did not call. Uh, Rams player number 23, I, I know his number. I don't remember his name. Nicky, Nickel, uh, Roby Coleman is the is the cornerback that yes. committed. Uh, just, just ran into Michael Thomas. And uh, Michael Thomas did not catch the ball because there's no way he could have caught the ball. Um, refs did not call pass interference. The city of New Orleans since that point has been in a state of outrage. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, to talk about some of the reaction, I mean, we, we've seen people, uh, basically call the Super Bowl tainted, that the Rams don't deserve to be in the Super Bowl at the point, uh, we've had, we've seen lawsuits, uh, be, being filed that probably won't go much further than gonna, that, really but, say again? <laughs> they're not really gonna go anywhere. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna go anywhere, and, you know, we've seen some politicians come out and be like, well, we may bring it to the bring it through the committee you know and but you which, know the uh i think the thing that has the most chance of happening is a change.org petition that's uh requesting that this sunday uh the saints and uh rams get back together so that they can replay the game yes yeah that that's a thing that's happening um, yeah, and, and you know you know those politicians focusing on the the changing the results of this game, you know, instead of you know the government shutdown, um, you know, and and you have uh, you, you just have a lot of people, and it's and it's not it, you, we we can say the fans, but you even have players coming out saying we we deserve a rematch. Roger Goodell hasn't really said anything. The NFL as a whole hasn't really said anything. The only thing that we know for sure was uh that Sean Payton got off the phone with the NFL like right after the game and they said right out the gate that they blew it. Uh yeah. but they I mean they have since it, released it was it. it was not a like correct call. It was not no, absolutely not. Uh yeah. I yeah. Hey, what, what what talk to me a little bit about your thoughts about it before I talk about it because I I, uh, I would like to get your I your mean, personal viewpoint on the whole matter. I would I I was I was really mad yeah. at the time. Yeah. Uh, because one, I was rooting for the Saints. Yes. Which, which, yeah, I'm gonna be mad at at a, at a like very clearly missed call. Yes. Um, I'm going to use the same, um, the same uh like uh reasoning I used during the Bears during the end of the Bears game. Mm-hmm. Um, the Saints and and different different results in, in the Bears situation, they did not play in a, play well enough to put themselves in a situation, uh, where where the the way that they played put themselves into a situation where they had to rely on on an unreliable kicker. Mm -hmm. The rest of the team did not do enough throughout the game to have the have one play. Change the, change the result of the game. Yeah. Saints, obviously, that was less in their control because it was a member of the Rams team that committed the, the, the penalty that then the referees did not call. Right. Um, but the Saints still did not play well enough to have, to have like, decidedly, we are going to win this game mm -hmm. if that call went the other way right fashion 
um, or if that call was made rather. Yes. So, yeah, it's it sucks. The result of the game could have potentially changed because of that. Yes. A lot of people think it is. They think it did. There was another. Uh, was it? It was either holding or face mask that a Saints defender did on a Rams offense. Yeah, that Jared Goff uh, got yeah. was someone grabbed his face mask. I forget who, but that was not yeah, called. But that well. was that was not called. That would have put the Rams in a, in a similar situation as the Saints. The one that the that happened to the Saints was definitely more uh, was definitely much more obvious, and that's right. why there's more outrage of it, and the and it ended in the Saints losing. So that's why there's more outrage from that. But you cannot point to that being the sole reason why you lost the game. Yeah, I I think you sum up my feelings too on that, and I I think, um, you know, I I. I I do want to preface with saying that I I don't want to invalidate the people who are outraged. I get it. I understand why people are angry about it. And I think that the more people people who are mad about it, the more likely they'll be changed. And I, I think that there needs to be an overhaul of the officiating system. I don't know. I, you know, the specifics of it, um, you, you we would have to figure it out. I, I don't see why and... I, I don't, the NFL certainly has the money to do it, and there's certainly the technology to do it, to put a bunch of people in the booth for every single NFL game, and just even have like have them all be referees in some way or fashion. Have like put like 22 of them up there, and have each of one of them watch one player <laughs> for each drive, coordinate it, figure out a way to make it, yeah. and 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 then just have them watch that player very intently and see if they commit a penalty and it may seem like a very like a little over officiating but that way you don't miss a blown call and then and especially if you have people watching all of this stuff happening you know you'll have you have more likely of a ch- chance to not have to go to replay as much you could just have someone in the in your in the the white hat's ear the head ref's ear and just be like um, oh hey, you missed a call here. Just drop the flag, or um, or that was a that was not a correct flag. You should pick it up. I, you know, yeah. I I don't I don't think that's that a ridiculous of a of a maybe the amount of refs I I'm talking about is a little much. But even just still, like maybe. have like a, 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 a just have like a, a a nice group or even one individual that you can trust to really watch out for these situations in that way flags are correctly called and the ones that aren't correctly called can be picked up and i I think that could have saved the game in that sense for the saints but i i just i think that the people who are saying that the rams did not deserve to make it to the super bowl and the ones that are saying that the saints if they got if they got that call they would have won the game i think I just think that people make these leaps when the controversial shit happens that they don't think logically about the situation that the Saints were in. Because let's look at it yeah. this way. It was a minute 45 on the clock. The Rams had a timeout. And if they were, if the Saints threw the ball and it was, it was called a pass interference, it would have been first down Saints... But the clock wouldn't move, and the Rams still had a timeout. This the Rams could have gotten three three stops, and that would have run the clock down. And then the Saints could have kicked the field goal and win the game right there. That's certainly a possibility. But what happens if, let's say, the Saints fumbled the ball at the goal line and the Rams picked it up? What what what's to say that the that the Saints? continue to throw the ball instead of run the clock they like the Sean Payne was doing the entire drive which was horrible clock management yet no one's yeah. gonna call him out for because of what happened you know that there's there's these things that people are just forgetting that happened because of this one really and again really bad call really horrible missed call but did it really impact the game and then 
let's look at the after af what happened afterwards. Yes, the Saints had to pick a field goal, but then the defense came out, which was supposedly the Saints had a great defense, and they let the Rams just march down the field and kick the field goal. And then they went to overtime, and guess who wins the toss? The Saints. They get the ball in overtime. And then yeah. what and what happens was that, Into that. Yeah, the, Drew Brees throws a horrible pass, gets hit, throws a pass, and the Rams easily pick it off. They could yeah. have. This was a situation where you could have. I I wouldn't say easily climbed out of that. The Saints could have easily won, but the opportunity was there, and I I just, it's a it's just so absurd. The Rams, they got a very 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 lucky call non call For in their sure. favor. For sure. But they also deserve to be where they are because they finished the game they stepped up on defense especially down the stretch that 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 game was dominated by the saints in the first quarter uh almost the first half and the rams stepped up big time down the stretch and that's why they won the game not because of a non-call and not because the the refs not because of the this conspiracy theory online that the ref missed the call was supposedly played for the Rams. I mean, come on, give me a break, folks. This is, I, 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 I love the Saints and I love the fans that are there. I think they are a passionate group of people, but that you have these people who are just so irrationally looking at the situation and so badly wanted the Saints and Drew Brees to have a second ring. Trust me, I do too. But it was just not your day, and it happens. This is what happens in football. It, 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 and and I do think the NFL needs to change shit. They absolutely need to look at it. This has been the story of the off of the season. If it wasn't for as this is bad officiating, <laughs> yeah, I mean, as great as this season has been, as great as the offensive, the the quarterbacks that have come into this league to make it fun, the offensive, you know, the firepower that has been the season that has made it so exciting. I, it, it, that's all great and all, and that's going to continue for, for years to come. But the bad officiating was a huge part from the very beginning, from the, the the laying on top of the player, laying on top of the quarterback when sacking them, drawing flags, you know, the helmet-to-helmet the -helmet rule that luckily was phased out before the season began. It has been a constant story, and the NFL needs to do something about it. I'm not taking that part away from the Saints. I Saints fans, I just think we need to calm down and and give the Rams their due credit. They they deserve to be in the position that they are. Um, for sure. And uh, what do you what do you, I know that you were rooting for the Saints, but what do you like about the Rams in terms of uh, going just going into Super Bowl Sunday? What what do you like about them? I like that they were able to adapt, yeah. especially with the the Saints kick the shit out of them at the start of the game. Yeah. And then the Rams, uh, like, realizing, oh, hey, Gurley isn't working in this game for us. Right. Let's use C.J. Anderson more often. Yeah. And they did. And they had that, that, that two-headed beast uh, that hopefully Gurley can get more involved so that they can use use him more. Because mm -hmm. uh, he's still a talented player, of course. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the fact that the Rams' defense stepped up how they did. Because uh, other than Aaron Donald, they haven't been great, and now they are are they're pretty good again. Yeah, and the last two weeks, it feels like the defense has been the thing that stepped up for for the Rams. Um, and I, I Aaron Donald didn't put up a ton of stats in this game, but was certainly I think one of the main factors up front. Um, Michael Thomas was pretty much shut down this game. He had a few catches, oh, yeah. uh, but it wasn't too involved. Um, you know, and, and yeah, C.J. Anderson just he continues to fill a hole while Todd Gurley. I mean, who knows what's up with him at this point? But if he's still injured, you know, it's C.J. Anderson has been a nice uh, hole for him to fill. And 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 kudos to Jared Goff. He hasn't played well in, in recent weeks, and he he's kind of getting back into the groove that he was earlier in the season, where he looked like an MVP candidate. Yeah. So uh, good for him. And uh, good for Sean McVay uh, to get to the Super Bowl, second year in. Um, and, you know, everyone's looking for the next Sean McVay because of his success that he's had with the Rams. And now he gets to really try to cement that uh, on Super Sunday. Um, you know what this means, Chris? Yes. 
the Bears are going to the Super Bowl next year. <laughs> What 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 do you be? oh because Matt Nagy because because this year's because like this year's Bears were last year's Rams yeah so next year's Bears are gonna be this year's Rams okay I think I'm following your logic yeah <laughs> we'll see we'll see how it goes um so uh that's that is the that's the NFC Championship game I think that I mean. Look, I don't think the Saints should really hang their head too low outside of you know the pe- the penalty, but you know Drew Brees hasn't been playing well. Um, you know, in in the last few weeks he he's been on and off. And Alvin Kamara, uh, he he did have some great runs in this game was was a factor, uh, but uh, it, the the offense just kind of slowed down. I think that I really think the Cowboys broke them. It, it just it just <laughs> it felt like that. Uh, yeah for for a few weeks now and um you know the, the the defense stepped up as much as it could but it just it failed it really failed the team in the last few last few possessions with the rams yeah. leading so um that's uh that that pretty much cover that covers that so uh on good on, on, good on the rams i'm upset about the saints but i'm not gonna let it ruin my life yes uh this next one i might let ruin my life i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I'm, I'm rooting for, I'm rooting for the Rams all the way in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um and with that being said, we go to the AFC Championship game uh and the is upon us. The, the the this was the story of the new gun in the league, the new uh the fresh face in Patrick Mahomes going against the old guard in Tom Brady and this game in the early stretches was just a it was a defensive uh it was a defensive game and 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 the Patriots came out and just grinded the clock the first two quarters the first quarter went by really quickly uh oh. that a part of that was Sony Michelle running in on the ground um, you know, and Tom Brady getting the ball quickly to his receivers, so that way they landed in in bounds, so the time kept like ticking down. And the Chiefs, in their possessions in the first two quarters, were just it was just not. Uh, they just it was hard for them to get anything going. Uh, and it was a fourteen nothing game going into the half. Um, some play by play here of uh my Sunday, by the way. Uh. It was at this point uh, that I went and lied down in a quiet, dark room at, <laughs> while the start the start of the uh, third quarter happened, and I because I was just like, it, "This is it. This is we, this is the season's ruined. We're we're back to having the Patriots in the Super Bowl, despite the fact that they were kind of they sidestepped the season. It seemed like with the, these." Three teams, the Chiefs, Saints, and Rams being the center of the football universe. And now oh, the Patriots are back. They're right back in it. And But then the Chiefs began to turn things around. And it started, they scored a touchdown in the third quarter right out of the gate. Uh, a very nice 54-yard uh, completion to Sammy Watkins. And that was followed up by a 12-yard touchdown pass to Travis Kelsey. Um and then the the they did get a field goal the Patriots and then the fourth quarter happened. And it has to be one of the craziest fourth quarters I have ever seen in a football game. But by the way, we we it, the whole overshadowing of the horrible call really it, it really did, like it really overshadowed him to repeat a word um the fact that this was two outstanding championship games which we have not had in a while i think yeah two, i think yeah that's a that's a good point like uh, like if like that horrible call aside uh if the patriots were not the patriots like if they were if 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 you if you put a different logo on that team, yes, and they didn't have the history, yes. this w- this would have been a fantastic game, like ex- experience overall. Yeah, and I yeah, you put the not like you said the putting the non pass interference call aside, and I, I think you're just talking about one of the great championship Sundays that we've ever seen. Uh, yeah. and the Chiefs then went on 
the this just outstanding run. They scored twenty four unanswered points in the fourth quarter. Absolutely insane. They actually had the lead at one point in, in the fourth quarter, or a few points I think in the fourth quarter. It yeah. was coupled with some review controversies and some, and there there were a few ref controversies. Of course, you had a you had like a slap in like in the face of Tom Brady be called roughing the passer, uh, yeah. which was very strange. You had there was a, there was a uh, uh, punt punt return that uh, it was unclear if Julian Edelman touched the ball. Yes, it definitely hit his left thumb, but no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I no, I, I yeah, that was a really tough one to call. Because like, I, well, like depending on the angle, like it looked like the ball changed direction when it got past his bicep. Yeah, and then you look at another angle, and it didn't. It it was inches away from his bicep, and but yeah, I, it was it was hard. They 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 ended up with the right decision. I, well, I don't know about that because I think about that. That, that definitely, I, I, if I had to make that call on the spot, I would say he didn't touch it. But the call on the field was that that he did touch it, and the Chiefs returned it for a touchdown. I, I don't, but I didn't see any video evidence that disproved that. You know what I mean? Like it was like they, I, like, like I the, did the the idea of the instant replay was was to overturn calls on the field that were obvious and i i don't know how obvious it was that he did not touch it the gut ball when you when you look like when you saw every angle they like there was an angle where it did not touch his bicep there was an angle where it did not touch his left thumb there was an angle where it did not touch his right thumb so it so it putting it all together it was putting it all together it, it was conclusive it was conclusive all right that's yeah. fair yeah. um this is someone who really wa- who was like <laughs> gunning for him touching the ball. No, yeah, for sure. I but I yeah. I think that's I think that right. I when, when you look at it and I think when you study it, I I think it was that he did not touch it, but I just was not too sure that they, it was super conclusive. But I get what you're saying. Um, yeah. The uh, there was also, but I I think one of the main craziest parts that made me almost squeal in excitement, but then sadness sad and disappointed was that there was a play where the Patriots who were down um and were very much uh they they were need needed to get another touchdown all of a sudden uh Brady uh threw an interception and he was retur- it was returned a little bit uh, and I would, but it was like s- s- not a lot of time on the clock. Like it was a little over two minutes left to go on the clock, and yeah. it, it was and it was kind of further down the field where you're like, oh my god, the Chiefs might actually do it after they intercepted the ball. But then the flag comes out, and D Ford, who has had an outstanding season for the Chiefs, on a terrible defense, mind you, a uh, terrible defense completely off sides like absolutely like how the fuck did he not see that he was off sides how did he not see that everyone yeah. was behind him i do not know but regardless it cost the team an interception and the a page, game-winning interception a game, literally game-winning a game-winning interception and that was and that was ended up being they threw it it, it was it was typical patriot win because over and over again, you saw this team, like, first down, they don't get it. Second down, they don't get it. And then third down, he finds Julian Edelman. Okay, then first yeah. down, oh, they don't get it. Second down, they don't get it. And third down, 25-yard pass to Rob Gronkowski. Like, it's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, every time, you're like, you think they're going to finally lose, and they don't. And then it goes to overtime, which is the first time ever that a Champions of Sunday had two overtime games. Yeah, and it the coin toss happens and Patriots call heads and it was heads. And I was just like, it's over because we've seen this in the past where the Patriots win the coin toss, they elect to receive, and they just march down the field and win the game. When did we see this? Best example was Super Bowl Fifty One. That's exact. Right. <laughs> that was that was the exact situation where we were like, "It's over." The Brady take is gonna take this because he wins the coin toss, and he did it. Uh, and sure enough, Burkhead Rex Burkhead uh, runs it in for the touchdown, and the game ends. Thirty-seven, thirty-one Patriots breaking the heart. 
yet again of Chiefs Kingdom, Andy Reid, uh, and for the first time, Patrick Mahomes having to deal with some di- uh, di- some uh, adversity. I almost said diversity. Uh, some adversity um, yeah. for the for the and now having to walk into next season without a championship or without having seen the Super Bowl. Um, so. Oh. I think you'll be okay. Yes. <laughs> what? What? We'll get we'll get into that in a second. Yeah. I so, saw, and, the, and uh, the, it an was hour. <laughs> everything just pissed me off about this game. But what did you feel about it? <laughs> I pretty much said all that I that I I felt towards it. Like had it had the Patriots moniker and reputation not been attached to this game, I would have loved it. Yes. Would have been awesome. Like you get that awesome comeback, but it's so close. Yeah. The entire time. Mm-hmm. Um. <sighs> it's just it's just it's just tough uh put me on old takes exposed for patriots won't make afc championship i guess uh uh yeah well i mean <laughs> well i mean that was that was last week but yes uh yeah but like this is like double that yeah <laughs> yeah this is even these this is even worse now that they're actually in the super bowl yeah um, um go ahead uh on the bright side mm. No, this isn't gonna happen. I was gonna say like maybe if they win, they'll retire, but that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Gron- if, if they win, Gronk will definitely retire. I I think so too. I I, uh, I think I he's think, gone either I think way he's though. Retire regardless. Yeah, I think I think but he's gone either way. The whole like a minor hope would be Belichick and Brady would both hang it up if they won the Super Bowl. I, there's a chance. I mean, I, I yeah. I'm not gonna rule it out completely, but you know I. I you just get so dead with this team that you're just like, I, it probably will happen, maybe, probably not. You know, <laughs> you just you yeah. you go through these stages of like optimism, and then you just watch the Patriots kind of like rip your dreams apart. But look, yeah. I mean, and I, I'm I'm just I'm just saying, you know, we shit on the Patriots, but it they they deserve everything that has come their way for the most part. And yeah. they they have absolutely earned their their place in NFL history, and at least respect like, to them. Like uh, I I I happened to be on Facebook, um, where one of my friends had commented on some sports post somewhere, mm. uh, and there was a lady on that post who w- kept replying to herself. Um, okay. A bunch of a bunch of shit like Tom Brady doesn't deserve this shit. They're cheaters. All their Super Bowl rings should be should be revoked, etc. Okay. Like eight or nine times in a row. <laughs> okay. Like just replying to herself. Oh man. And she had she had a Cubs profile picture, which was worse. <laughs> um, made it worse. But I'm just glad I'm not that person. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't let Tom. Like I don't like. To, I I'm not a big Tom Brady fan. Yeah. But I don't let my dislike for him ruin my enjoyment of the of a sport that I still like. Yeah. And just my life in general. Yeah, I, yeah. and I think you know, I I I I get over the Patriots. I I I think I got over the fact that the Patriots were the Super Bowl quicker than I was about the idea of the Rams Super Bowl being tainted. You know, I, yeah. I, I think that has pissed me off more than the Patriots being in existence. Um, but you know, like I, I've gone from like, man, it's Rams Patriots. Uh, like that was like the one I wanted the least right. to holy shit. The Rams are in the Super Bowl. Hell yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and it's the, you know, and I'm like, and I, I look at the Patriots. I'm like, is it the, is it really the end of the world of the Patriots in the Super Bowl? Because as far as I'm concerned, some of their best, some of the best Super Bowls have been the Patriots. To be fair, I've only watched. It feels like I've only watched Super Bowls with the Patriots in them. But yeah, still, well, like, <laughs> maybe, like Broncos might be the only other AFC team that you've been like into. Right. No. I. I but it's just. It's. A, it does just feel like when when the Patriots are involved, and I am. And I'm not just saying. Uh, the Super Bowl either they they always end up like delivering good games against good opponents but they just end up always being the ones that end up winning it um hopefully you know we'll see how it goes hopefully it's not this year you know but I, but at the same time like maybe if they win maybe it's like a they, it's like see you later everyone yeah. that we had that has kept this dynasty alive like who knows um but regardless uh the chiefs have nothing to hang their ha- their hang their head about except their defense who their defensive coordinator was fired a few days 
ago. Yeah, that's appropriate. Um, and uh, they. Uh, we should- uh, we we should talk more about the Chiefs during our recap. No, oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, we'll we'll get more into it, but I just the Chiefs have nothing to to be too sad about uh, overall. But Rams Patriots is your Super Bowl. Um, I have a I already have my list of storylines that I'll be adding to, uh, but I'll I'll save that for the Super Bowl podcast, of course, when we do it next week. Excellent. Uh, but. In the meantime, uh, we are going to move. We're going to turn the page a little bit on 2018. We're going to keep it a little bit open because we still have one more game to be played. But we're going to break down uh, some of the things that are going to be talked about in the offseason. And we're going to talk about each and every single uh, team that's not the Patriots and Rams. Uh, that what, what's What are they going to do for this offseason? Uh, and also just a little bit about their season as, as general, like what, what can they learn from it? Uh, what changes are going to be made or have been made and, uh, just, yeah, just a general overview of the teams and their current positionings. Um, and we're going to yeah. start things out uh, with the Arizona Cardinals. Go Cubs, take it away. Yes. So the Arizona Cardinals went with a record of three and 13, two of which I believe were against the 49ers. Uh, yes, that's correct. Yes. Um, uh, who is number two on this list. But uh, Arizona, first year, uh, uh, first and last year of head coach Steve Wilkes uh, <laughs> did, not, did not do a, a, to- a really great job. Yes. Um, uh, they were one of the five, I guess, five teams now with rookie quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, and they probably, they definitely fared the worst out of all of them. And Josh Rosen needs some work before he develops into uh, into what they drafted him to be. Mm-hmm. We'll, see, uh, we'll see if Cliff Kingsbury can change something in there, but this was an abysmal season by a team that was in the NFC Championship uh, three years ago. Yeah, and uh, the, the Cardinals, they're locking a lot of... Excuse me, bubble in my throat. Um, uh, they're, they're liking a lot of depth right now. I think certainly on the offensive line, which was completely uh, kind of like completely changed really mid-season. Um, yeah, they, they need a few more pass rushers. I mean, can't, Chandler Jones can't do it all. Um, they need some help in the secondary. You know, you, you do have Patrick Peterson and Buda Baker and a few other guys, but, you know, again, they, all it all comes down to depth with this team, and they're lacking a lot of it. David Johnson didn't have that great of a season. Uh, no, because they're Mike fucking McCoy or whoever uh, their uh, OC was, was like, run the ball up the middle every play, yeah. and it didn't work every play yeah i mean he had a few good games and i i think that he'll come back stronger next year possibly um but we'll see um another thing to note is that larry fitzgerald just signed an extension so he will be back uh for next season he was that's exciting he is not he will not be retiring as expected um and uh, a few other notes in terms of the free agent pool because i did keep track of some of the notable free agents if i could get to it uh, sh- 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 uh here he is um so in terms of the notable free agents they have to worry about uh their best guard mikey potty is going to on free agency although that's probably not gonna be a huge loss for them because of the offensive line just not doing well this season uh their kicker phil dawson is going to be gone marcus golden who started a lot of games defensive end he's going to be gone i mean I, I, and gone obviously asterisk you know they, they could resign could but these resign. are these are the free agents right now also on the list is fullback Derek coleman uh outside linebacker Dion buchanan free free safety Trey boston Defensive end Benson Mayoa, defensive tackle Rodney Gunter, and wide receiver JJ Nelson. All these are had some sort of major had a lot of games that they were involved in, uh, whether they were good or not. Uh, but they, that that's the pool. That's not like it's not the worst free agent loss for the yeah. Cardinals. None of that. It's like super. Good thing they're getting Nick Bosa. Well, right, yeah. I mean, and, and they have the first overall pick, and I, I, I think that Nick Bosa should be the pick there because they, you know, you don't, yes. you don't, oh, yes. you don't need a quarterback anymore. I don't think you need a running back, and I mean, you, you do have some semblance of, of a wide receiver core right now. Uh, Christian Kirk could, could grow into something. Larry Fitzgerald. Um, I, I think that 
unless there's like an offensive lineman that deserves a first round draft, like a first overall pick. But I think Nick Bose is probably going to be the guy, unless they trade down, which is going to be something that they can think about. Uh, but what did you think about Cliff Kingsbury being hired? Uh, it is a hire to cash in on the Sean McVay thing. Mm-hmm. And not much more than that. Yeah. Uh, like, d- did well at Texas Tech ish. Uh, got demoted to o- to college OC uh, at USC where he went four and eight. His team went four and eight. And then all of a sudden now he's an NFL head coach. Well, it's a weird hire. I don't like it. Well, uh, to be fair, the, the he he didn't play a game. He didn't coach a game at USC. Uh, that was only very temporarily. Uh, he, okay. he was uh, he was fired this season as Texas Tech head coach. Uh, gotcha. Hired to be the USC offensive coordinator. I had I had the dates mixed up. Yes, then. but uh, uh, he. But but still fired as college head coach which is not the greatest <laughs> yes um uh, especially like like i don't know texas tech isn't wasn't exactly the biggest football school no it was not uh it wasn't like a like okay you got you lost your job at ohio state because you went eight and four mm-hmm. or like harbaugh's gonna lose his job soon because he keeps having eight and four seasons and can't win any top 10 games right um but like he's still a good head coach for what he's doing, right? Uh, but it's not that situation. Yeah, I I think when you have a guy that is he's he's very the one thing that can be said about him is he's he's an offensive innovator just like Sean McVay. You know he he did he did have a high flying offense. He coached Patrick Mahomes. I mean I I mean I think I don't think that people are talking about that enough. You know Patrick Mahomes was his quarterback. Uh, when he was drafted, um, so I, I mean, I, I think that that's certainly something to consider. Um, and maybe Josh Rosen will rub off on that. Um, yeah. But you know, the question is going to be like, what what is going to be the team around him? You know, and I, I mean, Vance Joseph, who was just fired as the Broncos head coach, is going to be the defensive coordinator, and he'll be making the play calls. I am curious as to how he does things. Because I remember the year that he was hired as Broncos head coach, the 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 season before that when he was the Miami Dolphins defensive coordinator, the defense for the Dolphins was not that great. But that also was probably due to the talent level um, of the team. So I, you know, I I think that it will it will be worth seeing how uh, how the how the head coach how the head coach works. Um, how how the coaching staff as a whole works, and uh, I I think. I, I, I certainly think that Kings, Kingsbury is just going to be, uh, he's, it, he's a, it's an experiment. It's a, yeah, it's a fascinating thing. Uh, but the other side of it too, why the fuck did they keep Steve Kime? I'm not really too sure about that. Yeah. And I, I, I think that that could run into some issues, especially if the talent does not improve down the stretch. He was, he's had a great run, but he, the last few years, they just haven't, he's not built a team. Uh, that's gonna yeah. be sustainable down the road. So okay, I, uh, Chris, I'm sorry we cannot talk about each team this much. No, it's okay. Well, <laughs> well, it's it, it's you know what we're doing anyway. But yeah. um, the, let's talk about the Niners. Let's do that. San Francisco 49ers had a four and twelve record, also not great. However, they did lose their starting quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo and had to rely on the arm of Nick Mullins. Yes. <laughs> Enough yeah. said. Uh, they. They'll they'll hopefully bounce back, um, in in some capacity. I think Garoppolo is gonna uh, come back be be all right. I don't know if he's gonna be the stud he was at the end of a last season, um, but uh, he, he'll be good. They'll probably get Jarek Jarek McKinnon back. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully he's he's healthy and raring to go. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, it, it's it, it it's really like this this season was just uh. uh a happenstance of injury for that team. Uh, and usually that like in, in the case of like a team like Washington, who's injured all the time, <laughs> like that's a, that's a mark of, I think like bad coaching slash organization when your team is always injured. Mm-hmm. 
when your team just like is injured for a season and that's probably the reason why you weren't competitive you're gonna be fine yeah uh, i think that they will be fine next year i they i felt that they had a, they had a great chance to compete this year it just didn't go their way I, I think we overstated the amount of talent that they had because I think overall that they, they, they there there were a lot of injuries that, that no question but there was also a lot of um there was also just a lot of lack of depth and I think part of that yeah. was the secondary part of that was uh I I think the the pass rush you know did not really do that well uh there was a few good players but not like a ton of great help the wide receiver core is not that great. Um, so I they did they did play in some close games at the end there though. No, yes, and then they, they were they're highly competitive as a franchise. It's a testament to to Kyle Shanahan and Nick Mullins in that sense. I mean, we we don't we don't want to judge him too much, uh, but he he's had a few games here and there that he's played well with. Uh, but Jimmy Garoppolo is ultimately going to come back and take over this team, and that the questions are going to be uh, whether or not that they they're going to be able to keep their success going. Uh, potential Antonio Brown landing spot, maybe. Yes, uh, also true. That that's that's certainly going to be a factor. Uh, their only key free agents, uh, I would say, are Jimmy Ward, their their cornerback, and Robbie Good, Gold rather. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the kicker. Uh, because I mean, I don't, they don't really need Alfred Morris, but he's also in the mix there. Uh, but uh, that's going to be uh, very interesting. Uh, going forward, uh, let us. Uh, let, yeah, that that pretty much I think covers it. Not much changes uh, with this team. Let's move forward uh, to the. Oh shit! Who's next? Uh, uh, next is the New York Jets. Ah, the Jets. Uh, so the Jets, they went into the season with uh, kind of interesting expectations. They they people did not really think they were gonna do that well. Uh, but they felt like there was going to be some hope with Sam Darnold uh, in the mix there, and oh boy, Sam Darnold is... Uh, he, he came in week one and had an outstanding game, and then it was just all downhill from there. It was not a good year, and it led to the firing of Todd Bowles, and in this place is Adam Gase, and I'll give Mr. you... Mr. B-Hole. I'll give you a, I'll give you an opportunity here to say what you want to say about Adam Gase. Okay, look, dude, Adam Gase did shit in Miami. He made it to the postseason once, and then has done shit since then. You don't have uh you you don't ha- like like Sam Darnold's like probably going to be good, but do you really trust Adam Gase to turn him into what you need him to be, what you drafted him to be? I'm not sure if you do. And that Miami mediocrity is just going to translate somewhere else into the division. I don't. I don't like Adam. I don't think that Adam Gase was a good choice. I I think that a lot of the problems in Miami were due to the lack. Of, I think the general managers and the, the just the scouting for the Dolphins have just been so poor, and the drafting has been so poor uh, that it, I I just don't know if. Adam Gase had a ton of work to go for, and he kind of was. I think he was forced to have to work with Ryan Tannehill, who at times looked he looked great in the 2016 campaign, and then has not had a chance really to rebound from that due to injury and to just a various of other factors. Um, but there's just been so many horror stories with Adam Gase in the sense that so many players don't like him. Jarvis Landry. Uh, laughed his butt off on Twitter when when uh, Adam <laughs> Gase was fired, um, and there there's there's apparently just a personality issue there, and I think that's gonna be a major concern. I, he may be a quarterback guru, and he might be able to develop Sam Donald since Sam Donald's starting from scratch, but like, I I would I'm not like necessarily thrilled to have Adam Gase in New York, and I think. The press conference kind of set the tone of what kind of tenure it was going to be, where Adam Gates just literally stared down everyone uh, in the press <laughs> junket, and it was just it was a it was a bad old time. Um, a but the, the good news for the Jets, and I, well, I don't even know if this is good news. They did fire Mike McCagnan. I don't necessarily agree with that, but they have a shit ton of cap space, so they can build a lot of talent. But this is. It's going to be in the hands of McCagnin, who I, again, 
who knows what's going to happen with that. They, they have a shit ton of free agents. Uh, Avery Williamson, uh, Bile Powell, who I don't even know is going to play again because of the neck injury. Uh, Maurice Claiborne, Josh McCown, uh, Jermaine Cur- Curse, and Pro Bowl kicker Jason Myers. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, I, I mean, and, and there's a, a quite a few more. Uh, but I mean, obviously, Josh McCown's probably not that big of a deal. But there's some, a few other guys there that that had some really great moments this season that you're gonna miss. And uh, it, it's a lot of losses, but you could get a lot of gains, sign a lot of players. Le'Veon Bell has been kind of coined to be playing on this team potentially. So you never know. But it's this is the off. I forgot Le'Veon Bell existed. Yeah, Le'Veon Bell, man, he's back, baby. Um. <laughs> And so it's going to be... It's going to tear his ACL during preseason. Yeah, that, that, yeah that's what might happen. <laughs> that's mean to say, but he hasn't played football in here. I, I think the biggest question uh, for this just is, can they uh, can they pounce on this on the, the tons of cap space? Uh, and uh, can they build a successful team around Sam Darnold? Uh, we, that isn't just scraps from other franchises. Yeah, basically... Uh, well, I mean, we'll see the trades. I mean, it, trading is a thing. We have to remember that. Um, yeah. But let us move forward here, uh, and we'll talk about the Oakland Raiders. Oh, man, what a meme the Raiders were uh, this season. Uh, this what? yeah. Uh, Raiders fucked up a couple times. <laughs> um, it, with uh, for, first, first fuck up was the Khalil Mack trade. <laughs> uh uh this is strictly speaking from the raiders point of view yeah um this the the continuous fuck-ups were them playing football yes just in general <laughs> you can you can keep going i just wanted to shit on the raiders for uh once real quick yeah i mean it was the tra- is the cleo mac trade there's the amari cooper trade which looked great for the raiders at the time and now it's kind of looking worse for them um as, as the season kind of went on and there was just John Gruden didn't really show a whole lot of offensive magic in his first year as we much as much as we thought he would have the defense just was not good at all uh it was there, there was just so many issues with this team the talent uh I, again a lot of these bad teams have a lack of talent um and it's not gonna be surprised to see a bunch of them uh, go to the free agent market. Uh, they're one pro bowler and Jared Cook. He's going to uh, the free agent market at this point. Um, and it, I don't know, man. It, there's just there is so much of uh, of curiosity with this group. And uh, Mike Mayock is going to be the the general manager for this team. The guy who's coming, who's also coming. Whole go, coming from the TV and into the front office and scouting players, and I I trust his uh, drafting acumen, his his uh, the ability to study and look at players. But I am uh, I'm very curious as to see how the relationship with uh, John Gruden is going to work out, and if they're going to be able to work together to bring to build the team that John Gruden wants. Uh, and, and build the team that they that they think is going to be the most successful. And I'm I'm not too sure if we if John Gruden is going to be ready to to play uh, these games against all these younger coaches who are probably are more knowledgeable about the NFL and its current state than he is. Um, yeah. So th- this could be an outstanding turnaround project, but I feel like it's leaning more in the direction of a disaster that ha- has been happening and will continue to happen. Uh, I don't know if there's much help for the Raiders. Another thing, we don't even know if they're going to be the Oakland Raiders at this point next year. They're not going to be the yeah. Las Vegas Raiders because the- their stadium's not ready. So who the fuck knows where they're playing? There's been rumors that they could play in Las in like the Las Vegas uh, Col- University of Las Vegas College, but that that's might not happen. But- and would they rebrand as Las Vegas Raiders at that point, or would they remain the Oakland Raiders? I would, I would think if they go to Nevada, they rebrand as Las Vegas. They would do that. But what if, what if they go to, like, San Antonio for a year? Or... I, I I mean, I wonder if they're named themselves San Antonio Raiders for a year. I don't know. Because I, yeah. I don't know why they would just – I don't know why they would call themselves the Oakland Raiders because they're not there. 
Yeah. You know, San Diego. San Diego has been co- considered another one. Yeah. Their old That's true. division rival. It, it's a. It's going to be a strange, strange off season, I think. And there's not. You know, they they have three draft first round draft picks. I mean, that's going to be like what's going to s- set up the history for them. Will those three three first round draft picks actually work out for them down the stretch, or will it just fall into utter disaster? I that's that's the biggest story I think of the Raiders off season by far more than anything yeah. else. Is are they going to keep their car around? Is he, is he going to be the quarterback of the future? You know, all that stuff. But really, it's going to be those three first round picks. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Next up is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So go Cubs, you go ahead and take that. Tampa Bay Buccaneers started the year on such a high note, on such a note of Fitz magic. Uh, and then the Fitz magic, uh, petered out, uh, not Peterman out, but yeah. Um, well, kind of, yeah, <laughs> yeah yes, yeah. Um, kind of, so- Kind of, yeah. So uh, uh, they had a quarterback controversy through most of the year that ended up in uh, Dirk Hutter getting fired. The offense was really good. Mm-hmm. Like, it was still, like, for most of the season, it was still a really good offense. Yeah. No matter who was quarterback in it. But the defense, I can't name you a single player on that defensive side of the ball that wasn't stiff-armed into oblivion. <laughs> um. Yeah, the Buccaneers were were pretty trash this year, and I uh, don't see uh, or they I, I I like pretty early on I didn't see a, a a very bright future for them this season. Going forward, uh, Dirk Hutter no more, um, but Bruce Arians coming back, who likes to give their quarterback he he likes to play around like. The strengthening the quarterback position so mm-hmm. good news for Jameis winston bad news for human beings who hate shitty human beings because <laughs> uh, i don't want james i don't want Jameis winston to have success the buccaneers franchise can but i wish they i was hoping that this would be the end of Jameis. yeah i i, I think Jameis has like one or two like two at most more seasons before uh we see if we see if he was worth the draft pick or not. I, well, certainly not to this point. I mean, and no. I, I, I think that Jameis. I, I think the reason why they brought Bruce Arians in was not just because he is a quarterback guru in the sense of on-field stuff, but he has, he's dealt with personalities in the past. I mean, Tyron Matthew before he became like a much better human being that he is now, you know, had a, had a rough past and and being part of Bruce Arians' team kind of helped him with that uh and i i think that i i i think i love this hire the the most out of everyone i mean the health issues for arians we don't know if they're gonna end up coming up but it, he he's i think gonna make a huge impact on this team right out the gate todd bowles who was his great defensive coordinator when he was in arizona before he got hired by the jets is gonna be part of this team on the defensive side uh, a very diverse coaching staff, considering how there was such a bad loss for the Rudy rule and hiring black coaches uh, this offseason. I mean, that that's at, at least a, a good sign that you see coaches like Arians hiring a, a lot of minority coaches. Um, and I, I think the defensive front for the Bucks is still good, although they're considering cutting Ger- Gerald McCoy uh and i am not a fan of that i think he's been a great player for them but he might go somewhere else uh you know you have you you have a, a lot of great players on that team but the just the secondary is a historically bad bad team uh and, and i they they all need to go they that needs to be a complete wash at this point the offense has been good and it has played well uh and they need to kind of build off of that and and james winston can't turn over the ball enough uh so that's going to be a big storyline but building on that offense a little bit but mainly focusing on getting the defense and the defensive uh back specifically uh, a lot more depth on that front um yeah next up on on the, that list is the new york football giants 
The New York football giants. Um, they were a team that played football this season and finished five and 11. Yes. Uh, really didn't have anything spectacular. Uh, Saquon Barkley is, uh, is a player descended from, uh, from Mount Olympus. Okay. <laughs> he is incredible, but he is, he's the Barry Sanders of this, of this generation because he's an elite player playing on a really bad team. Mm. I don't think that the, like, if the Giants do not, if the Giants do not draft Dwayne Haskins this year or any quarterback, they are setting themselves up for, and I think at least five years of more failure. I I, I agree, and I, I think that even if it would, even if we had to sit through another Eli season, the idea of having a, a, a just a quarterback sitting behind Manning that we could turn to that we're supposedly going to have a, as like this as this quarterback to be like as a Giants fan just. It, it would be just so nice to at least have that backup option because I don't think Kyle Laletta is going to be that guy. That's the story of the season, of the offseason right there. What is the fuck is Eli Manning and what is the quarterback room at this point? And uh, they need to fix the offensive line. The, there needs to be some upgrades on the, def- the defensive side. Uh, but what in the world is going to be the future of the leader of the this team and uh that's good there was there was some you know at first it was like oh Eli Manning's definitely returning but the there was some press conferences after the season was over there were like yeah we'll see we, we talked to Eli we, you know we'll, we'll talk about it and they didn't really give confirmation that he'll be back it's like oh I don't know about that <laughs> I don't know if, if this is gonna work out for them um or, or if it's gonna work out for Eli rather so uh it's worth looking into, um, and I think that's going to be the main look in uh, look at the season. Uh, they need to draft, uh, have a really really good draft. I I don't, I don't think they need to. They should not rely on free agents. Nate Soldier was an absolute no. bust. No no no. Uh, focus on the draft uh, and uh, build through that, and uh, you know, and build around Odell Beckham, Saquon Barkley, and Evan Ingram. They're your three best those, players. Those yeah, those three you need to build around. Stop pretending Eli is a good quarterback. I, yeah, that, that's the big thing. Um, next up on the list is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, you should have been the one to talk about this one, but uh, yeah, we should we should have traded. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, you too late, you, too late for that. Too late. <laughs> All right. Uh, so J- Jacksonville came into the season with Super Bowl aspirations, and that. That despite a solid start to the year, just they completely fell flat on their face, and there is dysfunction over uh, a variety of different things, but uh, namely the quarterback position. Uh, it seems like this is the end of Blake Bortles, as we know at least in Jacksonville. We'll see Bad. where uh, that goes in the future. Um, you know, the the there's Leonard Fournette had a lot of on-field fights and issues uh that the 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 franchise was not happy about um and certainly there was some discussion of if he's gonna be sent out it doesn't sound like it at this point but you never know uh jalen ramsey their star cornerback he's had he's had a loud mouth in recent months as well and we don't know his future's kind of up in the air as well, but they, I, I personally think they should keep him. But I, I mean, if there's toxicity in the locker room, though, you do want to get rid of it. Uh, yeah. I do wonder about the veterans, uh, the ve- veterans on defense, like Malik Jackson. I don't know if he's going to be back. I don't know if Cleos Campbell's going to be back, despite the great, a great, another great season from Campbell. I, you know, you never know that sometimes they just say he's old. So let's get rid of him. Um, uh, no one was fired. No one was let go, and I I do worry about that a bit because I feel like there needs to at least be some accountability. They did fire the offensive coordinator, in Nathaniel Hackett, even though I don't think he was really the issue. Um, you, I think he was more of a scapegoat. He's now in, with Green Bay, uh. So yep. I think the story really of this Jacksonville team is going to be what what can they do to revitalize the defensive side of the ball and who the fuck is there going to be their quarterback uh in the future they're one of the 
it seems like a very few teams that are looking for quarterbacks this offseason, but still, yeah. it's a very significant position. Uh, I think it, this else. is the most likely landing spot for a certain Nick Foles. Nick Foles, Joe Flacco, could be. Yeah. Um, one of those two are going to be in Jacksonville, I feel like. Well, any last... When you, have, when you have this defense, and not a great offense, but with like some talent that Leonard Fournette can give and maybe bring in uh, a free agent wide receiver or someone. Um, D.D. Westbrook uh, played well. Help, they, can help, they can help with that. Yeah. Um, you have you have a contender again. Yeah. What Any parting words for the Jacksonville Jaguars for you? Uh, I was really disappointed this season. Uh, I went longer than I should have picking them to win football games, <laughs> <laughs> which I still can't believe. Yes. Um, I mean, they did start three and one, so. Oh yeah, uh, there's yeah. there's hope. I hope they bounce back. I really do. Um, I'm still gonna gonna root for them when I can, but I recognize bad when they're bad. Yeah, I, I, I right now it's a lot of bad for that team. Uh, so let us uh, move forward. Oh, uh, by the way, a note on the Giants, real quick. Uh, Landon Collins is a free agent. They better sign him. Anyways, uh, <laughs> the the Detroit Lions. Go ahead. Detroit Lions first year coach Matt Patricia ended with a six and ten record. This team beat the current uh, AFC Super Bowl representative New England Patriots. Yes. Uh, they haven't done much other. <laughs> Look, the Matt, Pat- Matt Patricia is another one of those coaches that was that I don't think was a good hire, and and um, had a lot of problems this season that just their team did not flow together how it probably should have. Mm. You have like Matthew Stafford's a talented quarterback. This was his worst season since he got in the league. Right. Um, care uh running backs Carryon Johnson did not uh live up to. His potential, I think, overall. Uh, he he had potential. It was just injuries, really. Yeah, in, yeah, injuries. He was one of the in, the injury guys. Um, but uh, uh, wide receivers too. You no longer have Golden Tate. Uh, but Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay, who are good receivers, didn't step up either. Mm. Just overall, the team did not play yeah. as well as they should have, or as well as uh, some expectations might have been for this team. I think the NFC North can be a really strong division, uh, but the Lions are going to be what's uh, what's holding it back. It's not the fucking Bears, and I can't fucking believe that anymore. <laughs> the the thing about the Lions is that they I, they they went nine and seven for a lot for a good amount of seasons with uh, Jim Caldwell uh, in at head coach, and the minute that Caldwell leaves and he gets fired, and they hire Matt Patricia, it kind of all falls apart, and this team starts to look like. Well, I I thought it should have been for years, but Jim, I think Jim Caldwell was just keeping this the record up for this team. I've always thought this they've lacked talent. They have they have a few stud, studs in the defensive backfield. Uh, they have you know Matthew Stafford, who I, I he's been on and off. I'm not too sure about what his future is going to be like, but I, I think they're going to stick with him at least one more year. Uh, you know, and I. I I am very curious to see what they do with Ezekiel Ansa. If they get a franchise tag him again, uh, will they sign Blunt or Zenner again in case Karrion Johnson can't play? Uh, I, I'm curious about that. Uh, but Matt Patricia is really going to be the storyline of the offseason for them. Can he can he just figure out a way to be a better coach? Can he figure out a way to? to show up on time to his meetings yeah like like be personally <laughs> accountable for himself because i don't i don't know if he can and i i think that, that there that's gonna be a serious question going into uh the going into next season is is this guy actually able to be a head coach or can he just be a, a coordinator yeah yeah um, so let us move forward to the buffalo bills and the bills uh their season it's weird. It's like they had a better season than last year when they had actually went to the uh, <laughs> went playoffs. To the playoffs. Uh, yeah. But in the sense that Josh Allen kind of provides some hope for this team, he was really inaccurate in a lot of situations, and that might carry over, and that's going to be a concern for them. But he had some outstanding games 
where he can literally just throw the ball a mile and 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 it being held in by a receiver. They almost won on like a hail mary against the Dolphins. It, it was he he so he had he's kind of bringing a lot of hope to the franchise. Uh, but as for the rest of the team, I I just think that there's so many questions about uh just every single level really the offensive line is now gonna you know is kind of falling apart without with you know eric wood and richie incognito retiring last offseason and now they're losing kyle williams which loses the defensive line depth is gone you know you have a lot of this team that's kind of just you know held a held around by scraps and there's not really one player outside of josh allen that you could be like oh maybe you could build around him i mean lorenzo alexander is maybe their best defensive player which is not really great because he's like 35 he's up there in age uh and Lashawn mccoy i don't even think he's gonna be back um and this was supposed to be a good secondary and and it's kind of that they were kind of a disappointment this year too and maybe tredavious white can show up again next year but um just overall, not not the best season for the Bills, but certainly a season, a potential season of hope for them, and not and like very few free agents that they're losing that's going to be of any importance. Uh, yeah. Any any words about the Bills for you? Look, the 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 bill other than the Raiders, I think I shit on the Bills the most this season. Mm. They were definitely like the Bills for us was either um, like blow out of the week slash most surprising slash uh uh like positive end blowout of the week slash upset of the week etc 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 yeah um they did not have a great season but they have a quarterback who can throw ball very well <laughs> yes uh, very much so yeah uh they're good like it's so weird but they 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 have the best chance to beat the Patriots the next season in this <laughs> quite, division. Quite possibly, honestly. Like, well, out of the out of the th- the three that are are not the Patriots, I think the Bills will be the best team. It's gonna it's there's a lot of off season. Uh, I feel like that's gonna yeah. change. Uh, that's true. But as of right now, I I I would not be. I, I would just be like at least book the Patriots to win the AFC East again, where they'll be well, one yeah. through four. It's, I mean, we'll see, not, but like that will happen until the end of time. Well, yeah. Like, I, I mean, I feel like <laughs> even if let's say there's a surprise retiring of Brady or Belichick, I still feel like the Patriots are going to end up winning it. Cause they have, they, they just have oodles of talent compared to fucking any other AFC East team. It's a, they, they are the reason I think that the AFC sucks ass so much. They, they need, they need to go. They, all three of those teams need to go away. Um, next up, the Denver Broncos. Uh, Case Keenum did not have a solid year, and so the Broncos are going to be looking for a quarterback. Uh, going into next season, I think they may ride with Keenum at least as a veteran, and maybe have like a rookie sit behind him. But they need they need to do something in that that position. They have a great defense. They still have a foundation at the at, uh, on the defensive side that they could get grow into something more. Uh, and they really helped that side of it with hiring Vic Vangio of the uh, of the Chicago Bears, defensive coordinator, and uh, he's gonna be the uh, he's gonna lead this team. Uh, I, I I think that a lot of people think he's gonna be a great head coach because even though he's never really put himself out there to be a head coach, he's just been one of those guys that you will always worry about facing against. And part of the reason why the bears were as successful as he, as they were, uh, because of him. Um, and so, uh, I mean, the offensive side is what I'm most curious about with the Broncos. And I actually, I don't know. Have they hired the offensive corner? Uh, Oh, they hired, uh, Rick scan Jarello, uh, who was with, Uh, I believe he was with the Niners last year as a quarterbacks uh, coach. Um, and Rick. so we'll see how that goes. Um, Rick Scardino? Sc- Scangiarello. Rick Scangiarello. Okay, Scardino is some other guy. Yeah. Um, what do you th- – what, what's, uh, what's uh, any thoughts on the Broncos from you? Uh, they, uh, oh, it's rich, rich, Rick spelled rich. Yes, it, it's it, rich. It's rich, rich Scangiarello. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, he was on the uh, 49ers. Uh, the Broncos were a weird team this season. Um, still, I think like like okay, they had their defense that's still good with Bre- with Von Miller, and then now adding Bradley Chubb, mm-hmm. uh, who is going to be a great defensive star. I think Philip Lindsay, uh, Cortland Sutton on the other side. Yeah, Philip Lindsay, Cortland Sutton, who are uh, really really high talent. Uh, they just got to figure out their quarterback. They haven't been the same since. Uh, uh, since Peyton Manning and uh, John, well, uh, John Elway, Chris, is just going on a quest to uh, to cement himself as the best Broncos quarterback who ever played. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I think continuing to find really shitty quarterbacks. I, at some point, you have to wonder if that's it because this is a <laughs> constant cycle of why. Like, I feel like every offseason we're talking about can John Elway find his quarterback? Like, at what point are they going to be like, you know what? You suck at finding quarterbacks. We're getting rid of you. I we love you. You're a Bronco legend, but fuck you. Get out of here. I, yeah. At some point, that has to happen because it, it can't keep on being that you're putting these veterans out there or just drafting these rookies that have high potential and then just completely fuck up. Uh, something needs to change on that front. Uh, yeah. But that's that's gonna be a big uh, thing to follow. Uh, for That's them. not the uh, John Elway thing. Isn't my take, by the way. I forget. I I can't source it, but I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals uh, are your next team here, and though it has not been official, they're expected to hire Zach Taylor as uh, the head coach. Uh, that they, they are, and not really much no notable things about that signing at the moment. A lot of stuff in the air. Uh, as of now, in terms of uh, the who he's signing, they're thinking Jack Del Rio, the former Raiders head coach, could be the defensive coordinator, who I, I like that hire a lot if they do end up going in that direction. Um, but the, the Bengals, it, I, a lot of it is that their their offensive line it was not good this year, and they need to develop talent on there. They have not been the same line since uh, Andrew Whitworth had left. Uh, and the the future of A.J. Green and, and Tyler Boyd is going to be bright. And Joe Mixon at running back is going to be bright. But uh, they seem like they're going to be complacent with Andy Dalton, but I, I would be curious as to see uh, if they would consider any changes there, if, especially Zach Taylor, who's the who's a quarterback guy. Uh, I think... If it's something changes uh, there. Yeah, I think the, the, the chemistry that Dalton currently has with his receivers is worth enough for him to stay. I, I agree with that. The the staleness of Mar- Martin Marvin Lewis was not boding well for that franchise. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, fair. Yeah. But I, I, I think I think Dalton is especially with his AJ Green and uh uh Tyler Boyd relationship that he now has, mm-hmm. uh they will they will continue to be a good offense in that regard. Yeah. Um they need to really fix that defense though. For sure. Um, yeah. and, and, get rid of Montez Perfect, please. Even though he's their best defensive player, but they that guy needs. To I don't, I don't agree with that. I think their best defensive no. player has been Geno Atkins and Carlos Dunlap up front. All right, all right. I I think that they, he's but that that they can easily get rid of Vontez Burfus, but yet they never choose to do so, and that's on the that's on the Bengals, that's on the former regime, and maybe finally with Zach Taylor showing up, that they get rid of him. Um, yep. Uh, yeah, secondary needs to be fixed. Linebacking core needs to be worked on. Uh, and you do need to add some depth around the two guys I just mentioned. But um, it's a big, big, big questions there. Uh, but that's pretty much that. Uh, not Again, we will know more about the head coaching situation for those teams once Zach Taylor can actually go there. Of course, he's focusing on the Rams at this moment. Yep. Uh, <laughs> next up is... Oh, shit. I opened a file explorer by accident. Who is next on the list? Uh, the Green Bay Packers. Go ahead. Are going to be next. Uh, it is. It's therapeutic, almost, to see the Green Bay Packers this high up on the draft list. Um, I'm going to talk real quick as a Bears fan, and then I'll talk about the Packers. Yes. Um, I'm more excited that the Packers have had had this record than the Bears had being a good record. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I was like, I don't uh, know. If that's true. Yeah. But the Packers had a shit season mm-hmm. run by a stale head coach uh, that they fired partway through. Um, none of them really played up to the potential that we expect them to mm. or the the like the 
like the highest played player in football should be expected to play at. Mm. Um, and that was, that was, I'm sure disappointing for a lot of Packers fans. They just sucked. Mm -hmm. They were not a good team this year. And I, I, I've said multiple times, uh, last year and this year that the Packers were not a good team without Aaron Rodgers. Uh, and they're going to, they're going to need a lot to, I think, turn that around and give this, give this man, uh, more chance to succeed. I mean, they weren't a good team with Aaron Rodgers, And I mean, the, the, that, that also that. I mean, in in the idea though that Aaron Rodgers was not part of the problem. I mean, there was parts where he was just throwing the ball away for no good reason, um, and you know that he so he had just a rough year this year, and that was part of my reason that I thought that it was weird that he was picked for the Pro Bowl because I know that he's just a home, he's just always going to be the go-to name, but he just yeah. was did, did not have a great year. Um, I think top to bottom. You, you really have to just look at this team at every angle and they they're losing Randall Cobb potentially in free agency uh, and Muhammad Wilkerson who was supposed to be a big help for them but got injured very early on in the season and Clay Matthews might actually leave Packers at the after all this time um what will they do with the State Farm commercials <laughs> I, I mean it's that has been Aaron alone in like a weird free agent guy yeah, but like clay matthews had the like fine like a bird that's true yeah, yeah. that's good that's gonna all fade away yeah uh with, with, with fly away. yeah, <laughs> fly, yeah there, fly it was code <laughs> i uh yeah it's gonna it's gonna be rough uh without clay matthews <laughs> and the state farm commercials but i regardless <laughs> i you know the 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 secondary continues to be built upon every single freaking off season. It feels like, and every single time, it doesn't feel like it's gonna work out. So that that's they a big question. And yeah, they traded Ha Ha Clinton Dix, who, 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 to be fair, also did not have that great of a season in Washington. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I, I, I Devontae Adams had a great year. I would be curious as to uh, what his like if he's gonna continue to be the number one guy. Uh, for them, he he's probably going to, uh, but it wasn't, I don't think it was an outstanding season for them either. So lots of questions, lots of questions uh, overall, uh, and we will see uh, how that goes for the pack. And my, of course, they are with, they're going to have Matt LaFleur as their head coach. Yes. Uh, another uh, Sean McVay product. Uh, we'll see what he does. He at least had an offensive coordinator experience with the Titans this year, and he, he, dealt with some tough situations with uh with marcus mariota and blaine gabbert mixing in in and out with them uh so we'll see but he's a likable guy likable head coach apparently so we'll see how that goes um yeah. next up is the miami dolphins dolphins tortured us all year sure did uh and it just felt like every single time we thought hey you're gonna you know you're you're gonna totally suck ass. They kept on winning games, and then finally it seemed like that whole trend calmed down, and that they started sucking big time. Um, you know, after you know they started three and zero, uh, and then they only won four games after that, uh, and, and yes. so they just and that just kind of all fell apart. Um, and and of course one of those wins was the miracle in Miami, which will <laughs> if if the Patriots do win this year, as at least a memory that Patriots haters can take with them and sleep well at night, sort of. Yeah, just say, you lost to Miami. Yeah, <laughs> which happens almost every year, but, like, this was a no, special, special uh, win uh, for Miami to get that what they did. Um, but, I, 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 like I was saying earlier, I, I worry about the depth on this team. I worry about the talent that the, the uh, that the general manager has put around them and Mike Mike Tannenbaum who had been doing all that stuff he's been kind of pushed aside, uh, and so Chris Greer is gonna take over as general manager. <laughs> Say again. That Mike Tannenbaum, Mike Tannenbaum. Why do you suck ass so much? Um, and then Brian <laughs> Flores Flores, uh, of the Patriots, because of course you gotta take from the Patriots. Uh, yep. he's going to be the head coach, uh, and the only black coach hired. So that, I, that, that sucks, uh, for again, like uh, I said, yeah. the rooting rule, but, um, that sucks for diversity's sake. yeah, for the diversity's sake. But 
uh, at the very least, it, it, he has been well respected in the Patriots organization for years, and so uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how he fills out uh, that roster. I'm not too sure right now what the rest of his coaching staff is going to be, so that's gonna be something to watch as well. Next up, the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons. What a year! They had a really good offensive year, if you really think about it. Um, like Matt Ryan, Julio Jones. Julio Jones figured out how to score touchdowns again. Yes. Uh, Matt Ryan was throwing touchdowns to him. Mm-hmm. But with the lack of Devonta Freeman, the rest of the, uh, uh, the offense was not as much as it could have been. And the defense, same way. Just they as a, as a whole, the team did not perform – uh, with the amount of talent that I believe that they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the end of the season, the Falcons decided to basically clean house of all their coaches except for Dan Quinn. Yeah. Was that the best idea? I don't know. Um, but bring in uh, Dirk Cutter, mm-hmm. uh, former uh, Bucks head coach, mm-hmm. for the offense that was really good in Tampa Bay to do the offense here. And then who who did they hire for uh, defensive coordinator. I don't think they actually did hire a defensive coordinator. I think they're just gonna go with Dan Quinn as the defensive coordinator for okay moving forward. All right, gotcha. Okay, but they 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 add Dirk Cutter. I think I, I that'll be a positive for them moving forward. I I think so. I mean that's yeah. that's why I mean Dan Quinn led led the, the Seahawks to the Super Bowl. You know he, he deserves a lot of credit for what he's done uh, on that side of the ball. Uh, they they have some key free agents. Uh potentially leaving them gary grady jarrett is one of them uh you also may lose tevin coleman who was their starting running back for most of the season um so a lot a lot of questions uh, in terms of the uh like wh- who they're gonna be able to keep around uh, mm-hmm. i think their biggest weakness is gonna be uh i i think is gonna be the the defensive front vic beasley did not play that great this year uh, to Karis McKinley also did not live up to expectations this year, so a lot they need to get, learn to get a lot more pressure on the cor- on the quarterback, uh, and uh, that's going to be the big storyline I think for the Falcons. Um, next up, the Washington Redskins. Washington Redskins. They had playoff potential until uh, Alex Smith's uh, uh, really bad injury, mm-hmm. um, and then they just couldn't. They started, I think, like eight different quarterbacks. I'm exaggerating, but (laughs) a a bunch of different quarterbacks the rest of the year, trying to find one that fit. None of them did. Mm. Uh, The, the name of the game for Washington for a while has been injuries. Mm. And I don't know why, but like just the, the organization in general, the, their players get injured a lot and they are, they are unable to compete and be division, like be successful in the division because they get injured so much. Like the last time they won the division, I think they were they were either nine and seven or eight and eight. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was in abysmal NFC East that year. Yes. Uh so they they have not been able to like find success. They also don't have a ton of big names on their team. Like Alex Smith was the biggest one. Yeah. On their team this year. Uh other than Adrian Peterson, like they hire they brought in Adrian Peterson to replace Darius Geis who got in, in, injured during preseason. Um guys, yeah, hopefully he'll play this year. Yeah. Um so like the as, as an organization, I hope it uh crumbles to the ground and never has success because they need to change their goddamn name. But for the players, they they deserve better than the uh the mediocrity that they're currently doomed to live in. Yeah, I, and I mean Jay Gruden, I I still believe in him as a head coach because I I did not think that the talent was that great on this team, and yet he, they still had such a strong start to the season. Um, mm. I I would be curious though as to why there's nothing being done about the front office who has neglected the offensive side of the ball, and th- though there's some great defensive players, it's just. Yeah, it's just been a utter. Tra- it was an utter train wreck this year, and yeah, I mean, I you have to look at the strength and conditioning for this team for the injury front. You have to look at you know, the, the system as a whole. Like, why in the world does this keep on happening to Washington over and over again? 
it's amazing how Kirk Cousins in in all the time that he was there as the starting quarterback and I know it was just three seasons but he I don't think he even missed a start uh, but yet yeah, everyone around him kept on getting injured and and this was certainly another season where that just kept on happening to them so yeah um that'll be that's a big question and it would be i'll be very curious to see if any of them actually uh, if the, if this actually does turn around uh, for washington at any point they can stay healthy and make a run uh carolina panthers Carolina Panthers had a 6-2 and two start to the season, and everyone thought that they were a lock for the playoffs because they were that good of a team. And then Cam Newton messed up his shoulder, and it all went to shit, Chris. <laughs> yes, it did. Uh... Yeah, they lost, they lost their next seven games uh, and only won uh, Week 17 because the Saints rested most of their starters. Mm. It, is, it was a... It was a downhill slope. They played a couple close games, like the Seattle one, to name one. Yeah, no, I mean, like, that was a close game. They definitely could have won that. They won Seattle's way. That's fine. Yeah. But what started as such a promising uh, season for them, like getting back into the groove of potentially what they were doing in their uh, in their Super Bowl run, mm. to turning to, oh my God, we lost seven games in a row. Yeah. It was. It was upsetting. Uh, as a Panthers fan, a uh, couple highlights is that only reason they sucked was because Cam Newton's shoulder wasn't working. <laughs> Fair. Uh, um, uh, they they still have a couple defensive players that, while their defense as a whole wasn't great, people like Luke Keekley, who is the best player on the team. Yeah. Um, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, like really like continue to show why why he is that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and why he will be in the Pro Bowl until like like it, when Luke he, when Luke Keekley stops going to the Pro Bowl, he will no longer go to the Pro Bowl, and that'll be in like ten years when he's just old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just old. pretty much. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird, like saying that he'll be old because he's like only a few years older than us. But <laughs> yes, um, uh, I, I, I mean, I, and they yeah. they had a I I would be remiss not to mention the standout performance this season from Christian McCaffrey, yeah, and proving that he can be this workout horse running back that he was in college, and that people didn't think he could be in the NFL. Yeah, I, I, and it, the Panthers have a good future. They just need to rebound, uh, and uh, get uh, and figure out how to get their talent to play as a team. Yeah, I mean, I think the big question is going to be offensive line. A defensive line like oh, just the trenches uh picks really that they that needs to improve um and but yeah the biggest storyline will be cam newton and and, uh, and if he's gonna be healthy he there it was announced today that he had surgery uh people were kind of playing it off as if it was no big deal but i would not say that i mean it, i think anyway. i would even like uh 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 consider it a potential like andrew luck situation where he sat out an entire season yeah, I mean, I I feel like you can't really rule anything out though at this point, you know, and and, and I would be, I I think we'll see how he ends up improving. Uh, but if he continues having these shoulder issues, it'll be a question of if he will play this year, like you said, and uh, what 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 will the Panthers do? Meanwhile, will they be able to get some sort of stability behind Newton at the, at that point? Uh, will be a, a big question as well. The coaching staff remains in place, so that 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 I think that was a good decision by the Panthers. But it is going to be a do or die year for Ron Rivera uh, if this team does not turn things around. Um, quick proposal, real quick, Go Cubs. Uh, since this is podcast is running a bit late, do you want to hold off on the other teams for maybe next week when we after we talk about the Super Bowl or even maybe the week, the week afterwards? That sounds a good idea, especially because like the next four that we do. Like we're like near playoff misses, so we can definitely just talk about them then. Yeah, and I and and then the rest of them are playoff teams. So yes, I, I, uh, I one 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 interesting that I just thing that I just want to note yes. before I forget. Yes, there were no eight and eight teams this season. Yes, that is that that was a first, uh, I believe. Yeah, it's, uh, seven eight and one uh, Browns and eight seven and one Vikings. Yeah, were the closest to that. That's wild, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, uh, w- and one last note on the Panthers: uh, Thomas Davis will not be returning to the Panthers. 
Uh, they announced that he will not return, so he's an unrestricted free agent. He's going to probably go somewhere else if someone picks him up. Uh, and I think that's your biggest name in terms of the Panthers. Oh, and Ron Khalil also retired, which is why they need to get something going on the offensive line front uh, yeah. for that team. So, uh, last thing we want to note on before we end off, apologies that it was not everything, but we realized, I think... I think we realized how much we wanted to talk about <laughs> all these teams. We're like, ah, it's kind of going to get over now. Um, yeah. But what, let's just quickly note, Pro Bowl is uh, this Sunday. In fact, I believe right now is the Pro Bowl skills showdown. Yes. Uh, uh, I it, it is on the TV. I haven't seen I have any not. of it. Uh, uh, I, 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 I so one of the, the first competition results uh, I saw on Twitter by accident. Yeah, I don't know um, if I, I don't know if I'll tune in for all of it, but we'll see. Uh, I, I'm gonna I record it and I'm gonna watch it later. Okay. Um, who's your who's your one guy that you wish was in the Pro Bowl? Fucking Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I guess when the when the Pro Bowl voting happened, um, uh, like it 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 makes sense for the running backs in there to be in there. Uh, Zeke Elliott, Saquon Barkley, Todd Gurley. But they all had teams. Uh, Chris McCaffrey was kind of on his own for a lot of that. Mm. So, I don't know. Is there that's, a, that's... Uh, like, between those three guys and Alvin Kamara, would you take any of them out to put Christian McCaffrey in? Um, I don't know if I would, actually. But that, that Yeah, I mean, that's the tough yeah. part. I, that's right. why I don't love the NFC AFC format. I get the whole rivalry behind it. I get that it kind of reinvigorate reinvigorates the play, the Pro Bowl, but you it, it kind of forces other running backs to kind of be out. Like in the long run, I mean, you have James Conner, Melvin Gordon, Philip Lindsay, and Lamar Miller on the AFC side, and honestly, Christian McCaffrey is a better running back than fucking Lamar Miller. So I mean, yes. <laughs> so I, I mean, I, 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 I'm just saying that, that. Are you saying we should go back to the uh, two coaches? I don't know what we'll do, but I feel like the best players should make the Pro Bowl, and it's. Uh, I feel like this AFC NFC format kind of forces it into a stupid yeah. hole. Also, we were so excited when that happened. <laughs> yeah, I, I was excited. Uh, cause I thought it was better, but then I'm thinking about it, I'm like, well, that kind of limits the, the, the great t- players that yeah. can make well, it. Wasn't it still like three from each conference anyway? Right. It, it was, it, well, well, no, no, it wasn't. It was, it was a mix. It was, it, it wasn't oh, okay. like a limit for the conferences. It was just who are the best players. And that was basically yeah. it. Um, the, um, I have, I just have a quick list. I'll just run, run through. I, I, I still stand by Darius Leonard. He was the best linebacker and one of the best linebackers in the league for a while. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, I, I, it's just a shame that he was left out. I would replace, uh, him. I would put him in instead of, uh, Benedrick McKinney in Houston. Uh, and, uh, I, I don't know who I would take him, take out. Maybe Deshaun Watson, but I I just felt like Baker Mayfield came into the league and he just was nonstop great. Yeah, I I would I so I was uh, I'm a bit disappointed that he was not included. Um, I as much as I love the New York representation in the special teams this year with with most of the players for the Jets and Giants being special teams players in, in the Pro Bowl. Um, Justin Tucker, man, I come on, I, he missed Dude. one kick against the Saints yeah. and he's barred for life. No, come <laughs> on, man. J- I would I would rather him be in the Pro Bowl than Jason Myers. He was still the best kicker in the AFC last year. Um, Andrew Whitworth as well uh, for the Rams. He's just had an outstanding season. He's just an outstanding veteran, a good guy that finally gets a chance to play in the Super Bowl. He obviously would not play in this game, but I think just for initial selection, I wish that he got in over Tyron Smith who I don't think had that great of a season. Even though he's been a great player overall, I don't think he had that great of a season compared to uh, Andrew Whitworth. And finally, uh, Jalen Smith, I think, deserved the nod over Lane Vander Esch, his fellow teammate, just because I felt like Jalen Smith was just more involved in the defense from the beginning and was just overall just had an outstanding season. Vander Esch, though, does deserve a nod uh, for sure. 
and that yeah. that kind of concludes that kind of concludes my Pro Bowl snub list. And uh, next week, I don't know, I, I don't know if we'll do maybe we'll do a few uh, season recaps next week. But our main focus for next week week's podcast, of course, will be on Super Bowl Fifty Three between the New England Patriots and the Los Angeles Rams. We'll break down the storylines. And of course, uh, we'll pick the game, and uh, you could uh, you could maybe do like a da- like a one of those daily fantasy roundup things if you want. I don't know if I want to <laughs> because all of my players were fucking knocked out. So <laughs> yeah, you're not feeling fantasy right now. You kind of want to just nah, let's, nah, let's... I'll wait till I'll wait till next season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and by the way, for future reference, uh, if you want to talk some fantasy for 2019 for these season recaps, you can absolutely do that. For yeah, I don't have season. anything right now. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how it goes. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole then. Um, but uh, with that being said, that's basically the that'll be next week's show. Uh, really exciting. It's gonna be Super Bowl week before we know it. But for right now, we'll go through a weekend without some meaningful football uh, before the big game. Uh, with that being said, guys, uh, thank you all so much for watching, and Go Cubs, thank you again for joining. Of course. And uh, I, we will see you guys next time. I need to get off because the Good Place season finale is about to start. Just wanted to point that out there and watch the Good Place. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye.